When you're nervous, your stomach hurts. And when you're hungry, your brain hurts. This is because your brain and your gut talk to each other. And they do this directly through nerves. This is your gut brain axis, and it's really important for your mental health. That's what today's video is about. Hi, I'm Dr. B. I'm a medical doctor, and I like to make medical education videos to teach myself and others about topics that I find fascinating. To understand the brain-gut communication, let's start with the gut microbiome. Your gut consists of a series of structures, starting from your mouth up top and going all the way down to the rectum, where you expel waste. But the most important component for communication between your brain and your gut is the colon. This is the large intestine, and it's about the last six feet of your bowel. The small intestine flows into it, the rectum comes out of it, and contained within the colon are about 40 trillion microorganisms. This is the microbiome. Now, these consist of viruses, fungi, and bacteria, but we're most interested in bacteria, trillions of them. To give you some idea, if you looked at a stool sample, 50% of a stool sample is actually bacteria. So your brain and your gut are connected. They communicate, and they communicate by the longest nerve in your body known as the vagus nerve. This nerve is an information superhighway with communication going both directions. Your brain calls your gut, and your gut calls your brain. And in this way, what happens in your brain can be directly communicated down to your gut, and what happens in your gut is immediately directly communicated to your brain. Well, how does this work? Well, the bacteria in your gut break down food into small pieces, and what are known as metabolites. These are small chemicals that are produced in the gut by the bacteria. But there are specialized cells in the wall of the gut that detect these chemicals, and these cells are connected to branches of the vagus nerve. Now, stimulation of these nerve endings sends information to the brain. And although there are a whole host of chemicals that have important actions that are created by the bacteria, studies show that probably the most important are short-chain fatty acids. Short-chain fatty acids are the main metabolite produced in the colon when bacteria break down dietary fibers by a process known as fermentation. And there's a lot of clinical and scientific evidence that shows having enough short-chain fatty acids is very important and important in diseases like depression, anxiety, autism spectrum disorder, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and even multiple sclerosis. And experimental evidence shows that administrating short-chain fatty acids can reduce anxiety and depression. So if you have the wrong kind of bacteria or not enough bacteria, that is not enough bacterial diversity in your microbiome, then the signals to the brain are the wrong type of signals. And keep in mind that less than 1% of these trillions of bacteria in the large intestine use the right metabolic pathways to produce short-chain fatty acids. So diversity of bacteria is vital. If you don't have enough different kinds of bacteria, then the short-chain fatty acids aren't produced in sufficient numbers. So like in all of society, in the gut, diversity is important. And diversity in the gut means up to as many as a thousand different species. If you reduce this diversity, you increase the disease. Now, fascinating studies to support this have been done. There's something called fecal transplants, where fecal matter is given to either an experimental animal or a human subject, either in pill form or injected from below. Taking fecal matter from depressed individuals and transplanting them into mice can cause depression and anxiety. And there are even case studies of treatment of resistant major depressive disorder in human patients by doing a fecal transplant from a non-depressed individual. Now, fecal transplants are really not practical at this time on a large scale and there is significant resistance to them for some obvious reasons. But there are actually easy ways to maintain a healthy gut microbiome and produce these important short-chain fatty acids without swallowing pills with feces in them. So what are these simple ways to maintain the diversity of your gut microbiome and keep the right signals going from your gut to your brain and back again? Well, this really falls into two camps, what to avoid and what to consume. What you'd like to avoid to promote healthy gut activity is minimize very highly processed foods, uh, pre-packaged, pre-processed foods that you get at the grocery store, and in particular, fast food. Also, a lot of meat protein and high sugar foods 
all seem to decrease the diversity of gut bacteria. A non-food behavior is helping your sleep patterns. The bacteria in your gut seem to be quite sensitive to circadian rhythms. All of these things are shown to decrease the diversity of your gut microbiome. So avoiding these things will help your gut microbiome, but what can you actively do to make your gut microbiome more diverse? Well, this really falls into two different camps. One is eating high fiber foods, and one is eating foods that have bacteria in them. So one of the best ways is to eat a large variety of largely plant-based foods. Now, these foods can be divided into what's known as prebiotics and probiotics. Prebiotics are complex carbohydrates or fiber that the bacteria will use to break down. Remember, short chain fatty acids come from bacteria breaking down fiber. Probiotics are foods that actually have active bacterial cultures in them. And in particular, fermented fibers seem to be very good for creating bacterial diversity, and decreasing inflammatory markers that cause not only mental health difficulties, but a number of other health-related problems. Probiotics include things like yogurt, kombucha, kimchi, kefir, and sauerkraut. Now, keep in mind you want to avoid pickles and things that are stable on the shelf. To get a good probiotic food, you need something that's refrigerated that has active organisms in it. And make sure if you're immunosuppressed that you talk to your doctor as eating active bacterial organisms can be a problem. If this seems too complex, you can simply eat the Mediterranean diet. Uh, the Mediterranean diet has many facets that promote very good gut microbiome diversity, cause short chain fatty acid production, and will be good for both your mental health and your overall physical health. That's the gut brain axis and why it's so important for your mental and overall health. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, let me know in the comments and try these other interesting videos. And please don't forget to hit subscribe.